back to Killer Fun, where we explore the intersection of crime and entertainment every other week. I'm Christy, and today, today, I have the bonus episode for Building Codes Might Prevent Serial Killers, our episode all about H.H. H. Holmes' House of Horrors in Chicago during the World's Fair in the 1890s. It was super interesting, but there were a few things that just didn't quite make it in the show. We have flubs because we always make mistakes. Jackie tells us how scared she was of our television after she watched the horror movie, The Ring. There's some of the chatting that we do during our break. Why was Marion Hedgepeth the man who ended up turning in H.H. H. Holmes being his downfall end up in prison. What about the prison that H.H. H. Holmes ended up in, Moya Mensing? We have some facts about that. We have some information about Pinkerton Detective Agency and rented bodies. Yeah, you heard that right. Rented bodies. Enjoy. Um, an artist, Vincent Castigli- Castigila. And then there was uh, Willie Lasco, Laz, Laszlo. All three of their bodies are found. I mean, what kind of lies did he tell? Because I think. <laughs> Sorry, Everything my TV okay? just went nuts. <laughs> and uh, okay. All right. It's settled down now. Okay. What in the world? It's settled down. Okay. <laughs> and we're back. I'm sorry, it like scared me too. It was like, I can oh, three bodies are found. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! It was like that moment after you watch the ring and like a phone rings and you're like, oh, you become a puddle of uh-huh. organs. You're like, I'm never answering the phone again. For- yes. Literally, okay, a total aside, okay, we were in the movie theater watching The Ring, and it stops, and it was totally silent, and somebody's cell phone went off. And, you know, and they had, like, the old-time ring, because it was, like, old cell phones, right? And it goes off, and, I mean, the whole place, a collective, like, (laughs) heart stopped. People just, like, froze. We were all, like, fainting goats, just (laughs) <laughs> and then falling over. It was so terrifying. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That's funny. All right. Um, all right. So all the three bodies are yeah. found from the kids. And that's yes. so, so, so sad. Horrible. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, um, I mean, what kind of... Uh, anyway. But... Okay, well, let me wrap this back around. I had it wrapped in my ponytail, and, like, the little earbud is got, like, a, you know, Band-Aid over the whatever, and then it's stuck in my hair. (laughs) Perfect. So then it's really covered up. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And he was still married to both Clara and Mitra at the time. Myrta? Myrta. Myrta. I think it's Myrta. So how did Marion Hedgepeth end up in prison to be able to be Holmes's cellmate? That's a good question. I was curious about that. So Hedgepeth was one of the, dubbed one of the fastest guns in the wild, wild west. And he was also chased by the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Huh. How about that? So he and three of his buddies robbed a train of $40,000, which what we mentioned before is like $1.1 million in today's money. And he was relentlessly pursued by the Pinkertons after that. He'd had a lot of more petty crimes prior to that, but that was the big one that they really wanted to catch him for. And they did. They arrested him in Chicago, returned him back to Missouri uh, to serve 25 years in the state penitentiary. After he turned Holmes in, the Missouri state governor, Joseph W. Falk, pardoned Hedgepeth because his crimes had been so egregious. Uh, Holmes's crimes had been so egregious. And Hedgepeth had played such a part in capturing Holmes no. by reporting where he was going, what he was going to be doing, who he was going to be associated with that they 
pardoned him 14 years into his sentence, you would think that he would say, oh, a new lease on life. I am out of prison. Oh, he's kept robbing stuff. <laughs> In 1907, he was uh, arrested for burglary in Omaha, then uh, again in Iowa, then a following year, and then he ended up being shot and killed uh, the last day of December 1909 during a botched robbery in Chicago. (laughs) Well, that's interesting. He couldn't seem to just let it go. He couldn't seem to turn his life around and just have a regular job somewhere where he just made, you know, a living. He kept robbing. Something about it. Something about yeah. it for these people. What are some facts about Moyamensing Prison? Um, it opened in 1835 and was demolished in 1968. So it is no longer there. The same architect who designed the U.S. Capitol building also designed Moyamensing Prison. Edgar Allan Poe was once imprisoned there. Oh, see, another that speaks to the idea that he is going backwards with his reflections. Mm -hmm. That this wasn't, he did feel something during those times. It was definitely something horrible, but I think he is applying knowledge he learned later and using a little bit of a hindsight to say, this is who I was. Yes. Agreed. Who else was in prison there? Al Capone. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It was the last, the site of the last execution by hanging in Pennsylvania in 1916. Hmm. And then, of course, H.H. H. Holmes was hanged there. That makes it on the list of five interesting facts. Oh, does it? Yes. Well, as it that should. That Holmes was there. So the Pinkerton Detective Agency, they got their start during the Civil War. They did all kinds of interesting stuff where they were doing intel for both sides and all kinds of stuff. So Alan Pinkerton was appointed Chicago's very first police detective in 1849. And in 1850, they open the first Pinkerton office and they work with police all over the country Hmm. to help them do detective work. And they're actually pioneers because in 1856, they hired Kate Warren and she was the first female detective in the United States. Wow. And they have offices all over the world now. They're still in existence, still do detective work, and they have offices everywhere. They're That's huge. so cool. Yeah, it's really cool. In South Africa, people will rent bodies to be able to collect erroneous life insurance policies that they'll rent and buy dead bodies to make fake funeral claims. The way they have their system set up there is they pay claims pretty quickly. If the body is not identifiable, you can rent the body, get a doctor to write you a death certificate, send it in, and then return the body to be used in another insurance scam. This is ridiculous. I know. It's crazy. So it's about... $10 $10 million that in 2018 that they uh, refused to pay out because they were suspicious situations, but they pay out the vast majority of them. So it's not like they're not paying out a whole lot of in legitimate insurance money because of scams, but there are people to the tune of $10 million trying to scam the insurance companies Wow! with rented bodies, rented, rented bodies. This is the thing rented. rented. Rent a body. I mean, how do you find that? I mean, I guess that's... Can you imagine Googling that? No. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) I have a weird Google search history as it is. Yeah. Right? (laughs) Like, you're somebody's entertainment somewhere in the NSA. They're like, this person is so much fun. But rent a body. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We hope that you enjoyed those few little outtakes that didn't quite make it into the show. If you did, please tell a friend because it's way more fun to listen to this show or any show when you can talk about it with a friend afterwards. 
Do find us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Killer Fun Podcast, exploring the intersection of crime and entertainment. You can find us on Twitter at Killer Fun Pod, or you can send us an email, Killer Fun Podcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. We hope that you're all well and safe. And if you do like the show, please rate and review. It really does help people find us. We would love for you to give us a five-star rating. If you can't, let us know why. We want to make sure that this is a show that you enjoy and that you have a good time listening to. We have a good time making it, but we want to make it enjoyable for you. So do let us know and be in touch and be safe. And we will see you soon. Bum, bum, bum. Da-da-da-da.